Back today, we're going to give you an intro of 3ds Max. The intro is just enough to get you started modeling and kind of let you know where the tool sets are and what you're going to really be using and what you're not. For the most part, using 3ds Max is pretty self-explanatory. It's, in my opinion, a little bit easier to get into 3ds Max than it is Maya. Everybody has a different opinion, so on with that. So the first thing about 3ds Max is you have the majority of your menus up here. Now these menus, unlike Maya, don't change. They're pretty much there, and they're pretty much broken into specific panels. So for example, I have animation here, I have my modifiers, I have my create. These menus up here are very similar to what's over here. These are my, this is my create tab, I have my modifier tab here, I have hierarchies, and basically motion and display and, and utilities. So these I'll get into in a little bit. Up here is basically a tool set of your rough tools. So move, rotate, scale, and then you have your snap accessories here as well as some other things like mirroring and aligning. And then you have the render tools and your materials and things like that. So this toolbar under here is basically called the ribbon and it allows you to have your tools in effect while you are manipulating an object. Um, mainly these are used for your modeling tools and we'll get into these in a second. Over here is your scene display and this is everything that you have in your scene. Since I have nothing in my scene right now, there's nothing there. You can actually separate it by shapes, splines, cameras, all of that type of thing. So you can filter out things quite easily. Down here is the animation timeline. If you are doing any sort of animation, this is where you're gonna be sliding back and forth. And then your anim some of your animation controls are down here. For the most part, we work in either this panel here or we work up here. And then, so in our create section, if we create an object, yay, uh, like so, it creates the box object here, the name of the object is here, and basically the information is down here. So if I want more segments, we can do more segments. If you'll notice, I can't see what my segments are. So F3 and F4 are your main keys. F F3 will basically bring the shaded view back and F4 will show the edges and things like that. So again, if I adjust, I can move things here accordingly. Then anytime you create an object is when you're going to be working with the object. Now we can work with an object in one of two ways. We can either convert this to an editable poly or something along those lines or we can add in modifiers that do the same job or a similar job. So for example, if I want to add a modifier in, here's my modifier list. And if I want to turn this into an edible poly, I can turn it into an edible poly and basically it'll give, it'll give me all of the pertinent information. However, there are some things that are missing from this and in order to kind of achieve a little bit more of a controllable uh, edible poly, you can also right click uh, so if you right click and you say collapse all, if you have an editable poly on, that will collapse it. I'm going to click here and I hit, I can hit delete here. And if I right click and say editable poly, that will give me the editable poly as well. So there's a couple of different ways to get to the editable poly functions. Okay. Now you'll notice once I created an editable poly, the modeling toolbar up here, the ribbon, basically expanded. So I've got a lot of more information. And I'm not going to go through every tool. Every tool is a little bit differently, but I'll go through different sections. So ultimately, the edible poly section is right here. So you can click this plus key here. And the nice thing about 3ds Max is the hot keys correspond to each poly section. So this is one, this is two, this is three, four, and five. So again, one, two, three, four, and five. WER is the move, rotate, and scale tools. So move, W, E, rotate, R is scale. Okay, so I can move back and forth. So with that idea in mind, you'll notice that once I go from, say, uh, the element mode to, say, the edge mode, you'll notice that my menus change here. 
for the most part they're very similar they just do a little bit different things so for example if i go here to one it tells me about shrinking and growing uh it also give me rings and loops if i'm in edge mode so rings and loops are there so these help you select basic tools so if i go ring here it will go all the way around horizontally if i undo that and go loop instead it'll go around where the loop is so the selection tools are really nice as far as selecting things then you have usually a collapsed menu which is soft selection soft selection is needs to be toggled on or off if you're using maya this is the same thing as going in the tool set itself so you can go in here and control the waves and so on and so forth so that works best of course with vertices and then you can choose what you're doing and then how much of a fall off you're you're using so you can see here as i grow bigger and bigger the strength changes so that's soft selection um, edit vertices basically you can do things like weld break connect chain fur and work with a number of things like that again same thing as edit edges a lot of the same commands are there now when you're using these you can also go to edit geometry and then in the geometry you can attach detach collapse quick slice do a number of different things a lot of these tools are all up here as well so it, they're in the ribbon and basically you can work with them accordingly the subdivisional surface is basically like uh, maya's nerms toggling so basically i can go here and i can show if it's an isoline cage so I can take, take off certain things, or I can show the cage, which shows the original. And so I can go in and kind of adjust and move things. If I don't want it on, I can turn that off. Generally, what I do is I create a hotkey with this, point you to that video here in the corner. And then with that, then you have a couple different things. So you have subdivisional displacement, creating a displacement map. Um, I don't use it a whole lot when I'm base modeling. And for now, don't worry about it. Paint deformation, same thing. It allows you to kind of paint your geometry, push and pull accordingly. Again, I don't use it a whole lot unless I'm doing organic modeling and so on and so forth. Again, if you wanna you know, work with something, you can also add in modifiers. And the, this is where I think 3ds Max shines compared to Maya. The modifiers are nice because if I want to say bend this, I can simply go and say, okay, we're gonna bend and move things accordingly so this basically will bend and if i want to change the way that's bent i can quickly and easily put a modifier on there and, and bend it and then if i want to do something else say i want to subdivide like say uh, let's add a mesh smooth that can round things out and make things a whole lot simpler again each add-on or each modifier has its own kind of parameters and you can play around with and move around with those however if you don't want to see that particular parameter so say like the bend we can turn it on and off which i think is really quality basically 3ds max is really good with hard surface modeling and doing things like that so there's a lot of tools built around that and it's really good for those particular objects i did leave out one little thing um, so i'm adding this to the video here uh, one of the big things is ultimately moving around in 3ds max so this is the move mode so if i hit the scroll wheel i can zoom in and out if i hold in alt and move back and forth i can rotate pan by middle mouse as well and then i can also like right click and access a lot of my polygon information so with that if i go here i can go into polygon and then from there, I can go in and extrude and move around just accordingly. So I can extrude this out if I want. And that's pretty much the basic interface. 3ds Max has the orthographic viewpoints as well. Uh, Alt W will give you the 3ds Max back ports. So now one of the other things that I always recommend. So Alt W basically will give me the four panels and then I can zoom accordingly. These are the base tools down here. Um, you can also use, you know, zooming. You can also use key commands like uh, Z and that will uh, focus and everything. And if you want to turn off the grid, it's G. So that's a really simple, really easy way to kind of 
get into and work around the navigation panels. And if you want to work in a different navigation panel, just right click in it so you highlight it and then Alt W to get back in there. Um, Alt W to go back and kind of jump around. And so that is kind of the interface in a nutshell. I hope you like it. I know it's, it's not an in-depth interface, but for the most part, it'll get you kind of understanding where things are in 3ds max if you have any questions feel free to ask i'm always available to take requests for videos and i hope you enjoyed it uh, have a great day